Jerry Brown here with Jerry Brown Travels, and I want to introduce you to Elaine here. And she has a wonderful story how she's living down here in Mexico. And she's living under a, unusual arrangements that I've really never heard of, where three friends have gotten together and they are co-housing, they're living together. This way they can split expenses. And you guys have e chipped in money and actually bought the house, all right? But how are you managing to live on three to $500 a month? Well, we're cautious about how we spend money. We buy food we, a lot in the vegetable stores local, and it's pretty inexpensive you know, when we compare to what where we come from. Right. And we, we make a lot of our dinners and, and eat in at home. So oh. we're not always out at restaurants. Lately it's been a little bit more, but typically we eat home all the time. Okay, so you save a lot on food. What would be, let's say your food budget that you're spending, you know, let's say out of your 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 own pocket. Yep. Uh, would that be, how much would That's that be? That's about $50 a week. $50 a week. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, that's pretty reasonable, fifty dollars. So, a good chunk of that, out of the three hundred, would be towards food. Sure. There? Yeah. Sure. Food is a big expense for us, and we eat very well. Yeah. Yeah. We, we yeah. get out and walk. We don't have a car. Okay. So we save on on the expense of owning a car, gas, all of that, insurance. Okay. So that's been really helpful too. I mean, the taxis here and the bus are very inexpensive if you need that. You know, we go to a big shopping somewhere, we usually walk there, and then we take a taxi home. Okay. That's okay. like three dollars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not you're not car is a, a big expense, so you're really saving on and also I understand that you guys have just put solar on your house here, so your electricity bill has to be almost nothing. I know. So this it just got been put in, so we just saw last month's bill. So this next month we're already selling them. Right oh, now, oh, you're our electricity, oh, okay. so yeah. it's kind of a benefit already. Yeah, so okay. it's been really so. So, you're not having to pay any rent, you're not paying any mortgage payments or anything like that. No. That is a big chunk of savings, in like that. Uh, has you know, as you, you say, you uh, you, you sold your home, right? Now, tell me about you know how you end up getting enough money to save up, you know. That's what is important. You got to have that nest egg, that amount of money set aside, you know, to fund one's retirement like you have. How did you manage that? Well, when I sold my house, I put my money into an account and came down here first and was exploring a little bit. And we just sort of were renting right away and we were all sharing that expense. And then we just decided, let's do it. Let's get our permanent day. We needed a certain amount of money, either income coming in or what you had in the bank. Uh -huh. And I figured while the money's sitting in the bank, let's get it on my permanent day. Right. So they'll see the full amount in yeah. there. And then, you know, then I invested a third into this house. So okay. the rest of the money was in an account and I transferred some into a Mexican account. Okay. So that's how I use my money. Okay, yeah. okay. And then keeping your, your overhead down that money can last and last and last. It can last longer than it really wouldn't stay. Yeah, sure. yeah. Because at some point, because you're, you're a U.S. citizen, right? That's right. So at some point, you're going to be able to collect Social Security. Yeah, sure. So you get a 62, maybe 65, so yeah. that you'll have that as a backup also. Yeah, and I do like little odd things where I crochet hats and things and, you know, get a few pesos for that. And that's helpful. That pays for well. Okay. So you found out ways of, yeah. Uh, have a quality life without it costing you. Yes. It's, is that, that's a that's the biggest minimalist thing. living in that. Okay. So you're financially independent and you retired early. Congratulations, isn't that great? Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. 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 So, so what advice could you give somebody there? What You know, a lot of times viewers are gonna watch this video and they're gonna see the title, Living on $300 a Month. It's just gonna capture their interest. But they don't have that nest egg. You were able to sell a house and have that nest egg. What advice would you give to them, you know, about, and they're too young to collect Social Security or a pension. What would you tell them? Well, especially for the younger people, you know, looking for jobs, coming out of college or whatever, 
um, getting on a job that you can work on the internet, you can go anywhere. These kids have been born knowing how yeah. to use the internet. That's a good point. Right? So they can just have a job anywhere. You, it only needs a connection. Right, right. And that way, you can go wherever and find the, the least expensive or the prettiest or whatever is your interest. Yeah. And you can move there and live less than you can in like the US or Canada or that kind of thing. Yeah, that's an yeah. excellent point. Yeah. Now, do you think it's necessary to move to another country? You know, we, we've traveled a lot in Asia and we've got videos on Cambodia and how to live there cheap. Do you find that that's necessary? Say again, for somebody that really wants to retire early and they really don't have, you know, adequate funds set aside, but right. what's your, what's your No, I would say that for sure, that's the best thing about living in another country, like Mexico. Well, Elaine, question I'm curious, was there something that happened, you know, significantly in your life that all at once a light bulb came up and you decided to go in a whole different direction than a lot of people in your neighborhood and your friends and stuff like that, I imagine that seemed quite risky uh, from their perspective. Oh, definitely. Everybody's thoughts about Mexico is that it's so dangerous, what are you gonna do there? And of course, I had that thought too, so I, I didn't really know either. I'm going by everything I hear. But my friend Jimmy moved here, and that was the question he said, would, would you move here? And it was, well, I don't know, is it dangerous? And he says, no, that's just propaganda. And I thought, okay. So that was one thought. And plus my kids had, were grown now and they moved out of the house and expenses were getting higher. And I thought, geez, you know, I'm gonna go visit, see what it's like there yeah. and see what happens. And when I came here, it was just so wonderful that I said, okay, time to sell the house, time to move on. Okay. Time to start a new life. My kids were doing their own thing and you know, you know, you're not really hanging out in the neighborhood anymore with other moms because, you know, they're back to work or whatever they're doing. And I yeah. thought, I had a cleaning business for 13 years, and I'm like, I'm tired of doing that. Yeah. So it was a complete mm -hmm. across the board, it's time for something new. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. So I was quite courageous. Yeah, actually. You did quite <laughs> I was courageous. a little nervous about it. But, okay, so that leads me to, to another question. There's a lot of single women that watch the videos, and they would love to retire early, and they'd love to be in your shoes. You have a different circumstance because you're, you're down here with uh, two other people, and so there's three of you, you know, your boyfriend and, and, and uh, Dan, the roommate, and yourself. But maybe they, they don't have that. What advice could you give them about, you know, being courageous to do what you did, you know, in coming down with it? What would you say to them? Well, part of it is that for us, we had a spiritual community and we knew lots of different people. And Jimmy was a kind of one of those people that brings people together. So a lot of people know him. So it was helpful that there was a community already beginning. So my thoughts are, what is your interest? Do you have a spiritual, you know, tradition that you do? That you do? Right. Anything. And you can connect with those kinds of yeah. things in different places. Right. Or if you know somebody that's done it, you, or if you just have an interest, you start looking up. We saw your videos, we thought they were fun. I used to watch them a lot before I came here. So I got a little bit of background from you two who were doing your videos. So that was kind of fun too. So people can be directed if they just ask questions of others who have done it, okay. and they can look it up in different places, I okay. guess, like that. As, as a single woman, though, in, in that respect, so that's who you're really addressing is, is a single woman that sure. it's uh, come down and check it out. Because there's lots of single women that have come here. Yeah. I see, I've met a lot of them here, and they, they're fine. They, they may have some apprehension, too, as we all do in the beginning, yeah. when you do something new like that drastic. Yeah. But they find that the, the, the language is, there's a lot of English here, so it's not so hard. You can learn Spanish if you like, and you start to just by being around Spanish people speaking. Yeah. And yeah. you just learn. Yeah. Okay. So it's been great. So overall, in your cost of living here, and living on, you know, 
Do you feel deprived at times? Do you feel like you're suffering? Never. <laughs> never, never, never. First of all, food is, I mean, we get berries, a, a quart, for like, I don't know, two bucks maybe they are. In the States, you get a little package this big for that same price. So you're eating really good food for less money. Okay. Vegetables, I mean, because it's all grown here. They don't have winters that can, you know, stop your growth of food. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you do for entertainment? Um, sometimes we have a movie here. We have a projector that projects a movie on the wall, and we have people come over and watch with us. Um, we go for lots of walks. I, we have a friend, Gary Lance, who he's a musician, and he plays at uh, Scallions right now on Sunday, Sunday night. So sometimes we do that, or, or we'll meet with a group of people and go out for dinner or something like that. But mostly, mostly we're home a lot more, but, but there's so many people around here that uh -huh. it's so easy to meet them. Yeah, walking. And, walking and, yeah, and hanging in the plaza. Yeah, yeah. Having coffee. So definitely you're not bored. No, oh, definitely not bored. Okay. Not <laughs> at all. Great. Not at all. Upcoming videos, Dan will talk about his story in part one. Then in part three, We'll talk to the millionaire living on 300 a month. Then, in part four, we'll take a home tour of their beautiful home and sit down with them and hear the rest of their story. Well, Elaine, thank you for this interview. I know you've encouraged, especially the single women, about the safety down here and that it is possible to retire early and to live a good life and not have to be a trust fund baby. You right. were not a trust fund baby, right? No. no. <laughs> okay. No. Hardworking woman, saved your money, bought a home, invested in it, sold it, had an asset, and now you can live off of that. Exactly. And it's great. Yeah. It's but thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. It's been wonderful to meet you. <laughs> See you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, we got yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> We've been social distancing here. We got the COVID. Yeah, but. right. <laughs> <laughs>